Well, hello there. This is Handro from AeroGuardian and RC Forever. And today I have for you uh, a video that will be a little bit different from what you are used to seeing from me. So here we will be watching me fly the Gripen, but I will also making commentary. And in particular, you may have noticed that I have not been posting videos about this plane for like one year or so. And the reason is very simple. The plane has spent more time on the workbench than in the air. Mainly because I crashed it five times. <laughs> and there's, there's a story to be told here and a moral to it or maybe more than one. And I wanted to talk about this uh, so so let's get into it and first thing that we are seeing here is how the plane was flying before uh, it started crashing because at this point the plane had gone to the ground a few times already but it was always like me trying to perform like super low and slow high alphas and maybe I overdid it a few times and then just the plane ended up belly landing uh, which it, it was a crash but it's it was almost like nothing you know so the, the plane just got a few scratches I fixed a couple of things and it was back in the air with no problem whatsoever can barely call that a crash you know when you are pushing yourself to the very limits uh, it, this kinds of things happen and uh, thankfully enough for the grip and in particular since the intakes are placed on the sides it can take belly landings pretty well because it will not crush the intakes and need a lot of repair work afterwards like it would happen if you did the same with the Su-35 for example or the MiG-29 etc. So this uh, is how this plane was flying before uh, it started really suffering really bad crashes and actually you can see here that at this point the landing gear is shifted to the aft of the um, nose gear compartment which means that I was flying with a CG of 4 centimeters aft of the wing marks so 4 centimeters aft of what the manufacturer recommends for this plane and well <laughs> we could make jokes about this all day long like some people uh, like have me under crosshairs for <laughs> flying what they say is flying tail heavy. This is not flying tail heavy actually. It's of course it's tail heavier compared to the stock setup but the plane is still stable. Tail heavy is a very um, technical concept. Tail heavy means flying a plane that is uh, statically unstable like in a longitudinal uh, axis it's going to be all over the place. And as a matter of fact, you can usually fly slightly tail heavy aircraft and, and, and survive the experience if you have enough skill and a setup that helps, like high exponential or low throws or a combination of both. Like if you actually check Arthur RC uh, vid recent video on the Su-35 Maiden, uh, there was a misunderstanding and he actually made it with a CG of 190 millimeters when I think the most I ever recommended is like 165 to 170 millimeters and he went straight to 190 for his first flight like crazy dude I mean big big thumbs up to Arthur uh, hey pal you did amazing on that flight so if you don't know about him go check his channel already um, he, he really does cool stuff and he's the master of the of the greaser landings so for everyone that um, that takes pleasure in watching other people la land with so much expertise they will enjoy his channel a lot so I recommend it and well the thing is he, he was taking off with a plane that was pretty much on the tail heavy side, <laughs> much more than I have ever been with mine, uh, I'm talking the Su-35 in this case. And he still managed to bring it in perfectly fine and made a super smooth landing. And his trick was that he was really using really low throws. 
without expo, which is not something that I would recommend. But uh, the throws were so minimal that he managed to get with it uh, and survive the attempt and and getting si side trail. Never mind. Uh, but the thing uh, that I mean here is that you are. What you are seeing here, the Gripen is not actually flying tail heavy in this video, even though the, f in the CG is four centimeters behind where it's supposed to be, according to Freewing or Motion RC or whoever that writes the manuals for the stock planes. This plane will still behave uh, as a stable airplane. Of course, it's much less stable than with the. Uh, with the CG where they ask, uh, where they say that you should be flying it, um, which has pros and cons, but all in all, I would say the plane flies much better here. And one of the things that you can notice is that um, the plane has the canners pointed pretty much down when flying um, like this. Like for example, here. Let's check this out. I'm going into high alpha and there are a few up corrections, but mainly you, you can see the canards being pitched slightly down. And when you get the, the plane to this point where you can leave canards permanently pitched slightly down, they usually fly much, much better. And also you have uh, a lot more. By the way, this, uh, this is not uh, me making a mistake but actually forcing the plane up and down to lose energy before entering the high alpha so but here you can see the canards are uh, pushing down think of this uh, as a not how will you how would i explain this so imagine that the center of pressure of the airplane um, depends on the control surface deflections. Actually, if the plane is flying like this, and these are the canards, you see like a total area, and this places the center of pressure like much to the front. If then you are deflecting the canards down, uh, it, and I'm flying straight at the camera, you can see that the surface minimizes, so the, sh the center of pressure is shifting up, and from the combination of forces between the center of gravity and the center of pressure uh, you're essentially flying the plane by moving the center of pressure around so uh, all that you are doing with this is like uh, controlling this center of pressure uh, center of pressure position in order to keep the plane balanced I like to think of um, controlling the plane as this which is not a way of talking about controlling the airplane that is usually talked about or referred. I think it's more intuitive when you are getting into a really crazy post-stall aerobatics. If you just visualize that um, the weight goes through the center of gravity and whatever you are doing with the um, control surfaces, the only thing that you are doing is moving the center of pressure around. So. If you have the canards constantly deflect, uh, like uh, pitch up to compensate for a plane that is too stable, this in turn is going to induce plenty of problems on the aircraft. Like it will make it uh, really hard to maneuver, and particularly the the grip and being a, a high wing load uh, design. When you are trying to get out of a maneuver. Um, if you do not have the plane set up so that it's really agile, you're very likely going to end up throwing your plane at the ground and crashing, and that's not good. So, of course, there are virtues to having a nose-heavy CG uh, in the sense that it's going to be, to some degree, easier to keep control uh, of. But um, also, every time that you are banking the plane around, the plane is going to want to corkscrew and go straight. Uh, to the ground and that's not something that you should be fighting the plane uh, it's going to be preventing pilots from developing their piloting skills fast enough so i certainly do not recommend that but again i'm getting super sidetracked uh, because uh, today what i wanted to talk to you about is about 
these crashes that I have been having with the Gripen and why, I, uh, why they, were, they were happening. And here, the first one, okay, at the beginning of the video, you saw three of these crashes. Sadly, we didn't, we didn't catch the five of them on camera. Too bad. But uh, I will tell you also about the ones that did not get uh, caught on camera and explain the reason for everything. And let me check that. I think the first of the crashes should be happening pretty soon. So here the plane was still flying really well because, uh, or really well to what I consider to be flying this plane, to be flying well when it has a CG of 14 millimeters behind the CG, which after these crashes, it stopped being that way because first I started adding weight on the nose in terms of glue to <laughs> stick pieces back together. Then I added the Hobby Eagle Gyro, which further added weight. And lastly, I ended up removing the main wings part. We'll get into this uh, later on. But all these things uh, slowly moved the CG back forward, not to the um, spot where the manufacturer recommends it to be, so the plane is still really agile, but not as agile as you are seeing in the video so far. And you, you can see that uh, when I am turning, actually, the, the elevons are barely moving uh, in the video so far, like with very minimal deflections. The plane is like pulling all sorts of tight turns. And of course, I have thrust vectoring active here, but that's not the main thing. And you will see what I refer uh, in a while. We will get back to that um, when the time comes and you will see that to achieve the same sort of maneuvers Instead of small deflections, I need like full-fledged, uh, full-throw deflections, and there it goes. That was my first crash. That's when things are starting to go south. There's nothing weird with this crash. This was not um, a brown up. This was not anything wrong with the airplane. This was pure piloting error. Like, wait, what? Was it me? I I made a mistake. How dare I say it was a pilot error, I should be blaming this on, on the receiver or... I mean, it's <laughs> it's the mainstream way of dealing with this, right? It's like, I cannot be blamed for a mistake with the airplane ever whatsoever, right? No, this was totally me. I just miscalculated um, in-depth perception after exiting a, a maneuver and I sent the plane straight into the trees. I usually joke about uh, this actually being squirrel militia hidden in the trees sending a tree-to-air um, missile and downing the, the plane. Because, of course, that's totally what happened because I could have never crashed the plane like that, right? <laughs> well, never mind. Uh, the thing is, um, here was the um, first flight after crashing the plane like that. and. Here the plane was still more or less flying the way that I liked it to. So, I, um, like the, the plane had broken in a few places, but it was not so bad. And I was, um, I was just um, messing around with it, and it seemed to be fine in the air and flying more or less similar to what I was used to. And so, so far so good. Everything seems normal, and since I, since I, because this first flight I was a little bit more conservative, although I'm doing lots of aerobatics, like I was not doing like very low uh, high alpha stuff or things like that, and just uh, for example here I'm flying a cool bit, but I'm at a safety altitude. If anything went went wrong, I still should have enough altitude to go out of that. But after I land in this flight, you will see that the next flight uh, goes south very quickly, <laughs> very badly. And actually, let's wait for it. Let, let's not spoil the moment because it's coming very soon. Here I am coming in for a smooth landing. Nose high. And there it goes. Greaser. 
Okay, so the plane is repaired, everything seems to be going fine. What could possibly go wrong? So let's jump into the next flight and let's open the flight with one of my favorite flight openings, which is a corkscrew spiral to the right. Oh no, actually not. Sorry. <laughs> I, I got... Uh, I, uh, there, there's, an, there's another flight before the mishap happens, so... Never mind, there's uh, another video of me just playing around. Oh no, there it was actually. Never mind what I said. So, you saw that this, right? Here's the replay in slow motion. I just uh, corkscrew to the right, and then as I exit, uh, I send the plane straight into the tree. And at this point, I was thinking, okay, I just made another pilot error. Like, uh, when exiting uh, such a maneuver, if the, if the bank angle of the plane is um, higher than 90 degrees, when you pull uh, up, instead of going into a turn, you will send the plane straight into the ground. And I thought that's what happened there, which to a certain degree it was. But here's the first moral of the story. I, I at this point, I thought this was purely a pilot error and I did not look further into it. And there's where I made a huge mistake because there was more going on with the aircraft. It's not that I got into that situation uh, by pure chance because the aircraft was uh, responding differently from what uh, the plane was flying before. Partially because the CG had already moved slightly forward from where I was flying, but also because of something that I will not tell you just yet, and you can start to try and think and figure out what that was. But you can see in this video already that the plane is behaving much nose heavier, and when I'm turning, uh, you can see the elevons deflecting up a lot. So, and actually I removed uh, a lot of the, of the pitch down offset that I had on the canards. And you can also notice that and the plane is still agile, it's still flying more or less fine, but it, you saw there in that like um, half loop, <laughs> in, I, I was pulling really hard, let's see again here, <laughs> like, well, you will see throughout the flight it's flying much nose heavier, here, look at that, it, it's like the other ones are completely up just to make a normal turn, that's not how the plane should fly according to me, of course. Um, but the thing here is that from that crash uh, to this flight, there were another two crashes that uh, were not caught on video. The first one was uh, a flight after the repair work, which um, started going perfectly fine. And then as I was confident that the plane was flying okay, uh, I said, let's just do an, a normal high alpha, nothing too fancy, like uh, thir 30 degrees or so, not the crazy 70 degree hover. It was like something very mild, which is the, f the free wing grip, and it's like one of the easiest planes to do that thing. It's mm, like even well, not something difficult in, no? for me to perform. <laughs> and as soon as I entered the maneuver, the plane started oscillating from side to side, which can be normal to an extent, but then with very small corrections, I am able to uh, to keep that in check. And this time, uh, instead of keeping it in check with very small deflections, the plane just kept oscillating more and more until it was totally out of control and it went to the ground. And this time, the crash was really bad. Like it, one of the ring, uh, one of the wings ripped completely. The um, the wing spar broke, it uh, destroyed half of the fuselage when being pulled out. So, and um, at that time, I decided to try the airplane without the main spar to improve a little bit the thrust uh, in cleaning the ducts. So, the plane flying here is actually flying without the spar, and you may see that the wings are flexing. So this is not something that I would personally recommend, but I mean, if you fly with some care, uh, it can still be done. But like, look at that, you, if you are careful, you will see that wings are, are flexing from time to time. 
And of course, the main issue here was that the uh, removal of the wings part, although it gave me, although it gave me uh, some more thrust, it was uh, completely maiming my center of mass. So again, I was flying pretty much on the nose heavy side. And also at this point, I had decided, um, actually before the second crash shown in the video, I had decided to take the chance to to use uh, a new gyro because until that point I was using an S8R uh, sta stabilized receiver from FR Sky, which did the job, but I was not really happy with it because uh, it was like, um, let's say, uh, the, the, the roll wing rocking and oscillation, it did not mm, do a good job with that. So here I moved to a Hobby Eagle gyro, the uh, A3S3 and this one was much smoother and I also replaced the Elevon and thrust vectoring servos for digital high refresh rate servos that would be able to take uh, advantage of the Hobby Eagle flying Hobby Eagle gyro being able to be set to like up to 300 Hertz refresh rate which should improve a lot on the stabilization performance of the aircraft but um, as a matter of fact, this improved the, um, the stability of the airplane a lot. So um, a lot of that wing rocking stopped being an issue, which is something great. But I was dealing with many other problems like the center of mass being moved forward. And most importantly, uh, I again thought that my other crashes, the high alpha one and another one that came later that I just made a post stall maneuver and somehow I was not able to control the exit and again I thought the two of them were pilot error like okay it's a new gyro it's new servos the plane is reacting differently I'm just not used to it and I shouldn't have done uh, this kind of maneuver solo but here's the beauty of having things caught on video I didn't have the video for those two crashes but uh, this, the, the one that will happen, I think it's right now. Um, this one, we caught it on camera. And at this point, I was already suspecting like, okay, something's happening. I'm like, I can make mistakes from time to time, but this is getting silly. Uh, how can that be that I'm making so many pilot mistakes? Like there must be something else going on. And thankfully enough, we finally captured on tape what was really going on with this plane all this time since the second crash, not the first one in the video, that one was just pure pilot error, <laughs> no excuses. But after that, um, you will see now there's something going on with this airplane, which doesn't look like it when it's flying, but there it goes. There goes a spiraling maneuver and right as I should be going out, oh, Oof. Straight to the Oof. trees and straight to the ground. And sounds of <laughs> disappointment by that. <laughs> I, I mean, check the nozzle and check the rudder. The, this will play back in slow motion a few times so you can see for yourself what is really going on here. Like, really take a close look at the nozzle and the rudder in the yaw axis. So here I am doing a corkscrew, which of course you can overshoot and send the plane to the ground, but it's usually not that hard to correct. But here you see the nozzle is still pointing to the left and rudder is fully deflected to the right. Like the plane was not reacting the way that it's supposed to with just a little bit of input on my, on my end on the rudder, it should have been able to completely go out of that spiral to the left and to the ground and just fly over the trees. But that's not what happens. And this is because the thrust vectoring uh, nozzle got slightly stuck to the left, to the point that you will see when I add full, uh, right, um, full yaw to the right input, and you can see that because you will see that the uh, rudder completely deflects following my orders, the nozzle does not react and I still have a uh, throttle added because of course I'm running out of energy like here. You can also see in, in the video that the nozzle is stuck to the 
to the left, right? Pun intended. And uh, as I understand that mm, I'm going to hit the trees, here I am already starting to command uh, right yo, but you see the nozzle is tucked to the left. And then you can see that the, uh, the rudder is more and more going to the right. Here it deflects uh, completely, but it's too late already. And the nozzle, it's not reacting. It's completely stuck right there. And even though it seems like it's straight here, it's not. It's slightly pointing to the left, which for a plane like this, uh, when it's already in post-stall maneuvering, basically overcommands any input that, um, that the rudder could have. So pretty much I was sold, regardless of what I did the moment that I went into post-stall maneuvering with a plane that has a nozzle that is not working properly. So there goes what was really happening. One of the servos that I had replaced uh, was not strong enough and I actually, after seeing this video and seeing this, I made some tests on the ground and I held the nozzle with my, with my fingers and just tried to command uh, yo to the left and to the right. And to the right it had force, but... Uh, or no, to, 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 the la to the left it had force, but when trying to mm, command uh, yawing to the right, the nozzle would not move at all. Like uh, with just a very slight pressure was enough for, to completely stall the servo. So you can imagine that all, all those maneuvers that I was uh, making, which required uh, some sort of contribution from the nozzle, or even if the even if the rudder still mm, was uh, giving me authority. Since I am used to flying a plane in a particular way because of the combined uh, reaction of the thrust vectoring and the rudder, maybe I would usually add only just a little bit of a correction there. And since the nozzle was not contributing, I only had the rudder and that was clearly not enough. So the plane was overshooting in at times where it should have not. Or for example, in the high alpha uh, crash that uh, was not caught on video, but I told about you uh, earlier. Um, of course, if you have a gyro compensating left and right, uh, it, it was not so much that the gains were wrong, but that the nozzle was only compensating in one direction. So every time that uh, it tried to compensate in one direction, it made it worse. And when it tried to compensate in the other direction, it was doing nothing because the servo wasn't moving the nozzle to where it should. And that's pretty much it. So uh, all this just to tell you that um, when you have a crash or a mishap or anything like that, um, don't believe yourself or don't stay... Um, don't think that once you have uh, pinpointed the problem that that's it. Like try to make the extra effort of going further and seeing what other things uh, could have gone wrong because more often than not, uh, you may have made a wrong assessment of what was the issue in the first place. So here I was wrongly assuming that it was a pure uh, pilot error thing. And sure enough, the pilot errors were, were made, mistakes were made. But uh, that was the, not the ultimate thing, because if it was just pilot error, it would have been just a couple of crashes. But I kept crashing again and again and again. And finally, uh, the real issue came out, which was the, the, my replacement of the stock servos. Funny enough, I, you usually replace the stock servos to get something better. And in this case, I miscalculated the um, torque required. So uh, <laughs> ne uh, never tell anyone I, I, I have recognized that. <laughs> Just kidding. I messed up and this was the result. Five crashes in a row. Well, four crashes because the one wasn't, didn't really have anything to do with that. Um, and that's that. And happy flights and keep that in mind. And hope this is helpful for someone and let me know in the comments below what you think and bye bye cheers see you around